Hey, YouTubers. Good afternoon. This is Joe, K9UR. And uh, today I wanted to make a quick video to show you the procedure to replace the relay in the Ameritron ALS 500 and 600 amplifiers. The amplifier that I'm going to be doing today is a new style or newer model ALS 600 that offers the remote control feature. Uh, the older style ALS 600 had simply a band switch. Uh, the ALS 500s are very similar as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the open frame relay, which can be a cause for problems in the ALS 600 and 500 amplifiers, especially in an environment that is high in humidity or in uh, dust and dirt. Uh, what can happen is the open frame relay contacts can go faulty and uh, the amplifier will no longer operate. So this is one of the things that I like to do. I like to replace the relay in these amplifiers. So that's what we're going to do today. It's actually not as hard as it looks. This is Joe, K9UR. Stand by and we'll uh, get Let started. Let me just orient you quickly. This is an Ameritron ALS 600 amplifier. And I've got the cover off. There's about 20 screws to uh, take out um, in the ALS 600. And what we're going to do is we're going to orient this where the front panel is going to be to our right. And the back, uh, where the fan is located, and the back panel where the coax connectors are is to, going to be to our left. And what we're looking at here is uh, the work that we're going to be doing is right here, which is the open frame relay. And let me just kind of zoom in on that. You can see it's a, uh, it's a big relay, and it uh, switches the RF uh, when the amplifier goes from receive to transmit, transmit to receive. There's two problems with this relay. Problem number one is it's slow. It takes about 15 milliseconds, maybe longer, for the relay to close. And if you don't have a rig, a transceiver that has TX delay, you can wind up hot switching those relay contacts, and that's bad for the amplifier relay and also bad for your radio. It will give a, a very brief a spike of standing wave ratio, or SWR. The second thing that's bad about this relay is that it's open frame, and you can see it's open. You can see, and of course, any kind of humidity that gets sucked in or out from the exhaust fan could cause issues with the relay. Now, to the credit, you'll notice the relay contacts are gold-plated. Although they're gold-plated, they can also they they can still get subject to uh, corrosion and um, uh, hot switching can cause the relay to no longer actuate. The other issue that can happen sometimes with this relay is the spring up top here can go bad or can get weak. And that spring controls the relay mechanism, the armature. And when that armature is defective, the relay will stop working and the amplifier will no longer key up. So what we're gonna do is, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the old relay. Now, we're not gonna remove the old relay entirely. We're only gonna remove the upper portion of the relay. The lower portion of the relay is soldered to the circuit board. And we're actually gonna reuse that or recycle that to be used with our new relay board and the relay board is made by Alpha Delta 5 X-Ray, AD5X, and uh, Phil Salas does a great job. He's down in Dallas, Texas. I actually knew him probably 30 or so years ago when I was uh, living down in Dallas, and uh, we came across each other a few times at HamFest and such. Anyway, he's a great guy. He does a lot of stuff online, uh, and he has uh, uh, several different parts for the ALS 500-600 amplifiers. The one that I particularly like is his relay module, so we'll get into that in just a minute. So let's get started removing the relay of the ALS 600. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take the spring off and I'm going to uh, just very gently take my diagonal cutters or my pliers rather and pull the spring out. And you can see now that uh, once I've removed one side, that relay armature is now loose. Now I'm going to pause the camera here for just a minute and... Uh, so that I don't drop that spring onto the board and uh, get that off. And what I will then do is I will remove this piece of the relay, the part that I'm wearing. Now that the armature is loose, I've got that spring loose there. There are three wires that are connected to this back side of the armature board. There's one here, one up top here, and then one in the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently clip the wires that were going into the relay. You could unsolder them as well. I just like to unclip them. I mean, I like to clip them. That's just an easy way to uh, get the relay uh, removed from the circuit board. Uh, don't remove the black wires from the circuit board. Just remove it from the relay. Okay, we'll reuse those black wires when we install the new relay board. Here's what the uh, relay looks like. I've uh, cut the relay off. You can see it's a 12-volt relay. And uh, basically, uh, 
got the spring on there. This is this is basically going to be trash. It goes in the trash, but the uh, the relay contacts. You can see the relay contacts. A little bit of uh, I don't know what the word is. Just a little bit of tarnish on them, but it's not too bad. But I replace these anyway, just because I like the full break-in feature of the uh, of the closed dip relays. And we're going to replace those with these little guys here. And I'll I'll get into this in a minute. Uh, what the relay board looks like. Uh, but that's a that's a picture of the relay board that uh, Phil provides. A relay board, some wire, and uh, the two dip uh, ICs that are uh, the tip. Sorry, the dip relays that are sold separately. I buy those from DigiKey or Mouser. Not too hard to order them. They're probably three or four dollars a piece. Probably could order them off of eBay as well. All right. Uh, so uh, step number one, as I said, is open up, take off the uh, that armature of the relay. So now what we're looking at here, we're looking at the relay itself. Those are the co that's the coil to the relay, and uh, these two uh, black wires here that go into and out of the circuit boards. And then this relay, this wire here is actually connected to the, to, to the relay. So we've got three wires that we clipped off of our armature there. One, two, three, okay? So stand by for the next step. And the next step is gonna be removing the upper part of this relay. So stand by for that. This next procedure makes a lot of hams nervous. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna destroy this part of the relay. This bracket here is held on by a small uh, basically a rivet. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this bracket, which holds the relay coil, but we're going to keep this lower piece of plastic, uh, the bottom part of the relay. We're going to keep that intact because as you can see, it's soldered to the circuit board already. So we can just use these uh, relay contacts as uh, you know, electrical uh, uh, connection points. We don't have to go at the board level. We can just solder our wires, our new relay board, directly onto those old relay contacts that are going to be perfectly fine to work with. So the first step we're going to do here is we're going to take a needle nose pliers and we're going to stick it into this uh, relay uh, socket here, I guess like this. We're going to just grab onto it and we're going to lift it and we're going to bend it. And you say, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Yep, we're bending the relay. We're bending the relay. Now you can see down below here, and if I can zoom in on it, you can see right there in the middle of the screen, and I'll kind of point it out here with the scissor tip, you can see that, that uh, I guess you call it a um, rivet. Now we're going to basically remove this uh, metal uh, C bracket that contains the coil of the relay. We're going to remove that from the bottom. So hold on a sec. We're just literally going to do this just kind of roll it back and forth gently slowly back and forth let me zoom out here so you can see what i'm doing i'm going to roll it slowly back and forth and eventually that metal will fatigue and that relay will come up oh, there it goes that relay will come loose okay you kind of have to wiggle it back and forth back and forth back and forth not the best thing here but we're getting it okay all right, hold on, let me pause, use two hands so I get this done fast. Okay, well, we're back here, and I just want to show you that screw head. I mean, sorry, the screw and how that goes through, and of course, it's uh, on the other side of the board there. That screw goes up through, and what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take a drop of super glue and put it on that screw so it doesn't jiggle around. The problem is you can't get that screw head, uh, that screw out. It's kind of trapped underneath the board, so I just take a drop of super glue, as Phil suggests, and put a drop on that screw and that'll secure it in place and it will never rattle around again. It's okay if it rattles around, but you think that, uh, you know, you don't want to risk something happening to the, uh, to the uh, other connections there. So we'll glue it in place. So let's go do that. I put the amplifier on the side, on its side, by the way, and I'm just gonna put a little drop of glue on there. we go. You can see the glue there. Just going to let that sit for a minute and do its thing. 
should be fine. We'll hopefully let that dry, and when that dries, that screw will not come loose. So we'll give it about 10 minutes for it to dry, and we'll continue our project. While the amplifier is sitting on its side, and that glue is just about dried around that uh, screw hole there, the other thing I've done is I've taken each of the two black wires that go into the circuit board. Uh, one here I've stripped a bit off, and then the other wire I've stripped a bit off. You can see that. So those are going to go into the new relay board. So I'll orient you to the new relay board in just a second. The amplifier is now done, right? We're ready to proceed with the next step, which is to uh, modify or add the controls for the relay board. So uh, stand by. We're going to get that started in just a minute. Okay. While we're waiting for the uh, glue on that uh, little bolt to dry. I got my little screwdriver that I've stuck in there and it's kind of holding the back side of that, uh, that, that bolt uh, so that the glue uh, will uh, uh, stick. Um, what I want to do is I want to orient you to the top of the relay. So the relay, there are one, two, three, four pins on the upper row, one pin on the middle row, and three pins on the lower row. The upper row, on the left-hand side, you'll see two pins that are not gold. That is the amplifier plus and the amplifier bias. And then uh, down on row three, there's the amplifier minus, uh, relay, sorry, relay minus and bias. So there are four pins that we're going to solder wires to, uh, 24 gauge wire. And each of those uh, four pins, one, two, three, four, we're gonna have a four inch wire coming out of it that's 20 gauge, sorry, 24 gauge. The other, Two pins up top here and two pins on the lower row of the relay. Those are the RF in and RF out, normally open and normally closed. And uh, we're going to use a 20 gauge, so slightly heavier wire on those four posts. So when we're done, what we'll have is we'll have eight wires uh, that have been soldered onto these tabs that are sticking up on this relay, bottom of the relay board. And we'll have eight wires that are sticking up. Uh, each wire about four inches in length. So stand by just a minute, we'll get started. I think a picture says a thousand words. So once you see the work that I'm doing, we'll get started here and it should make more sense to you. Okay, what I've got here is I've got four 24 gauge pieces of wire. Each wire is four inches long. Phil gives you the wire, it's included in the kit. You'll notice there's a little piece of heat shrink on one of the four wires. That piece of heat shrink will protect that wire from short circuiting against the board, the relay board when we install it. And that particular uh, uh, wire with the heat shrink tubing on it will go on the bias. Essentially, the middle row pin, that's where the heat shrink wire will go. It will attach to that particular pin. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start soldering the four wires on to each of the four connections for the relay positive, relay negative, bias in, and bias, uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, and the two bias. So we'll have relay, relay, bias, bias. When we're done, we'll have four wires sticking up. You might wonder how I attach these wires. What I do is I just do a little U-clip or a little U-hook and that uh, compression fits over that uh, 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 particular relay contact. And then I just uh, touch my soldering iron to that gold uh, tip uh, uh, contact of the relay. And boy, that gets hot fast and takes solder and uh, we'll solder that piece of wire nice and securely. Here we go. Got that all soldered up. You can always go in there with little diagonal clippers and clip off a little bit of that wire. But I don't worry about it usually. It's not going to make any difference. Right. So here's what we got now. We've got uh, eight wires that have been soldered to the relay board here. I'm just gonna straighten these wires out and lift them straight up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now you can kind of see what that looks like. And you say, well, why do I have to do that? Well, the next step we're gonna do here is we're gonna put the relay board onto those wires and those wires will actually hold the relay board up, the new relay board. And uh, so we've got, uh, let me just orient you to this. We've got um, 10 connections 
the uh, actually the diode goes towards the front of the uh, radio or the amplifier. So there's the diode. The uh, uh, pin number one of the relays will go into those sockets. You can see how the sockets have a little keyway there. And uh, the, the only other step we have to think about, and before we, we do this, is to make sure that we get the black wires also properly connected to the relay board. So we're going to do that in just a second. Uh, stand by. Okay. The next thing I've done is I've slipped the relay board over those wires, and I've soldered the black input and output RF to that middle terminal of the relay board. The amplifier is oriented, the front of the amplifier is to the left. And you can, uh, the, the, the wires uh, literally just thread right in. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, cinch up the spacing of the uh, wire so the relay board is really close to the uh, top of the other board. And uh, when I do that, uh, then we'll solder all the uh, uncoated wires into place. Okay, just a little bit more finagling. And here's what this looks like. Um, you've got the, uh, the relay board is attached to the bottom of that uh, plastic old uh, part of the relay. It's actually being held by the eight uh, wires that connect uh, in and out from that relay socket. I've bent these wires flat just for soldering. And I'm going to now uh, solder it in place. I've got the input and the output wires also uh, uh, soldered. So here we go, we're gonna do eight connections and uh, should be good to go. Ready to pop the relays in and give it a right. test. There we go, we got eight wires soldered. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup here. I'm gonna take my diagonal cutter and clip off each one of those wires one by one by one and we'll be ready to pop the relays in. Okay, the last step is uh, we're gonna insert these uh, dip relays into the relay socket here. So uh, bear with me just a second and okay. we'll do that. Got the relays installed now. Now the trick on the relays, there's this little white piece on the relay or white mark and that designates pin one. It's upside down here, but pin one is facing this way. And there's a notch, you can see the notch in the dip header. And so you wanna make sure your pin one or your notch lines up with your white mark on the relay that way you don't install the relays backwards these are these are um omeron uh, relays which are pretty good quality they'll handle probably about seven eight hundred watts of course the als 600 is 600 watts pep so it should be no problem at all and there's two of them they're paralleled so should work just fine so anyway this is how this looks now now we're going to do a quick uh, test see if things uh, work as they should and uh, take it from there 